But like Colonel Downing says, there's not a day that goes by, not a single day that goes by that Vietnam doesn't go through my head. And I imagine it's the same thing with Colonel Downing. I want to show you my hooch mate. I think he was 21. He was killed in Tet in 1968 in Quay. And I still communicate with his mom and dad. He was awarded the Silver Star and they named a ship after him. So what he did was not anything that was just tiny and small and insignificant. He made a difference. And there he is at his job. He was a supply officer. His name was Robert Moinster. And maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago maybe, I happened to be reading the morning paper, Mardi Gras, and uh, they say the monster was coming to Mobile. His mom and dad came, and I still stay in touch with them. And in the wardroom of that ship was his picture and his citation for the Silver Star that he was awarded. And how many names on the Vietnam Wall? Anybody know? 58,000. That's right. And there are a little less than 2,000 now that uh, that are MIAs that uh, have not been found. Uh, about four or five years ago, uh, we had a ceremony down at the battleship where one of my classmates from Auburn, he was a helicopter pilot and he was killed in Laos. And uh, it was uh, about 35 years after he was shot down that uh, they found enough to be able to say that they found his sight and they, they found some teeth that remained. Now Colonel Downing and I have some books that we're going to uh, give to the library but we're going to leave them here in your room so you can take a look at them uh, before they go up to the library. But this issue of the wall gives you the history of the selection of the architect and design and the entire history of the wall. The most visited memorial in Washington is the Vietnam Wall. And those 58,000... Can I have 58,267. The um, first known casualty in Vietnam was Richard B. Fitzgibbon of North Weymouth, Massachusetts listed as having been killed on June the 8th, 1956. I don't to go through this, but his name is listed on the wall with that of his son, Marine Thor Lance Corporal Richard B. Fitzgibbon III, who was killed on September the 7th, 1965. There are three sets of fathers and sons on the wall. 19,996 on the wall were just 22 years of age or younger. The largest age group, 8,283, were just 19 years old. 3,103 were just 18 years old. soldiers on the wall were 17 years old. Five soldiers on the wall were 16 years old. One soldier, PFC Dan Bullock of Goldsboro, North Carolina, was 15 years old. 997 soldiers were killed on their first day in Vietnam and 1,448 soldiers were killed on their last day in Vietnam. 31 sets of brothers 
are on the wall. Fifty-four soldiers attend, attended Thomas Edison High School in Philadelphia. They are the largest number from one high school to die in Vietnam. Eight women are on the wall, died nursing the wounded. Tiny Bealsville, Ohio, with a population of only 475, lost six of her sons. West Virginia had the highest per capita rate in the nation. There are 711 West Virginians on the wall. The Marines of Marinci, Arizona copper town of Marinci, 5,058 population ever. The nine graduates of the Marinci High School enlisted as a crew in the Marines. Their service began on July 4th, 1996, and only three returned home. The most casualties for a single day was January 31st, 1968. The most deaths for a single month was May 1968, 2,415 died. And I'll just say that for, for most Americans uh, who hear this, they will only see the numbers that the Vietnam War created. To those of us who survived the war and to those uh, families of those who did not, we see their faces, we feel the pain that those numbers that I just described created, and we are, until we too pass on, are haunted by the numbers because they were our friends, they were our fathers, husbands, wives, sons, and also daughters. This is, uh, both of these books are, have been awarded the Pulitzer Prize. This is an individual account of that this fellow was preceded me in in uh, I Corps around the name Philip Caputo. He was a Marine uh, platoon lieutenant. He he lives and uh, lives in Connecticut, but he was awarded the uh, Pulitzer Prize for a rumor of war. This is an individual account of one, his, his tour of duty in the war. This book, A Bright Shining Lie, if, if you're really interested in finding out about Vietnam, because every, every conflict that's gonna come up during your lifetime, no matter when, the Vietnam, the Vietnam experience is going to come up in conversation or come up in in policy making by the politicians of, of whoever's running the country who you're going to be running the country but you're going to be you're, you're going to be reminded of what happened in Vietnam and if you really want to know a bright shining lie is the truth Again, a Pulitzer Prize award winning. 10,000 Days of Thunder is also by Philip Caputo. But this is a, a quick little timeline of, of everything that went on during, during, before, during, and after Vietnam. But most especially while the conflict was going on. But you have to really be encouraged to dig down inside yourselves and find some way of serving the nation. It's incumbent upon you. It's your responsibility. Because, you know, we have choices now. It's because of all those veterans who went before us that gave us the rights. One more book I'll tell you about. This is Vietnam Today. You can breeze through it. It's a, it's a little bit of history in there, too. But uh, I, th I think you would Colonel, Colonel Downing and I really appreciate the opportunity to come and speak on Vietnam because that is our war.